Building in Minecraft is hard. It's time consuming, difficult, and usually ends up being garbage. But every so often you put all your time and effort into building something magical. Except this giant city I built here didn't take any of my effort. In fact, it only took two minutes to build. That's because I spent the last month building the first AI mega 3D printer inside of Minecraft, which allows you to build whatever giant build you want into Minecraft in mere minutes, using only the command blocks that are found within the game itself. But a few months ago, all this didn't exist. So here we are in the beginning, and the first thing I built here was just a basic template for what I'm going to be doing later on. As you can see, it already looks quite ridiculous. So my idea on how this is actually going to work is by using this small 20 by 20 block platform. And what you can do is build any build you want on top of this platform, and I'm probably going to make an armor sand scanner go around and scan each block. And it's going to try guessing what you're trying to build, and then it's going to replicate it into this giant fat area over here. Which means all the data can be sent over to here, and it'll fill up this entire 6 million block space area. I hope that's big enough. This video is going to be such aids to build. Honestly, the first way I should go about working on this is make it so it's able to at least scan blocks here, so it can be prepared to further analyze everything in the future and then begin building it, maybe? I don't know. So the first button I'm going to introduce is this print button, and that is going to begin identifying whatever was built on that pinky goofy looking platform I built over there. Alright, I did something amazing, you're not going to believe it. That is all I did. <laughs> basically, by summoning an armor sand here, and if it's scanning the blocks at its feet, then I can basically make it move forward, and it will scan every single block in this entire area. And it should also be able to scan the blocks around where its toes are, so that's helpful data. And as it goes one by one, it should be able to deliver checks throughout this entire area until everything is scanned. And with that idea, I think I'm ready to get started. There, I got the stupid armor sand to go around the box. That was so annoying. The way I did this was actually kind of interesting though, because basically how it works is by starting off here, the armor sand makes its way through the first layer, but while it's doing this, I'm gonna make a scan for only terrain blocks, aka a bunch of the blocks that you would find in the nature tab, like grass, dirt, and warped nylium. But once it reaches the end, instead of going up to the next floor, it's actually going to restart scanning the first floor, but this time it's going to be looking and scanning for building blocks, aka blocks that can create buildings. And then once it's done with all that, then it finally moves up one floor. And keep in mind, it needs to do this 15 times in order to reach the top of the scanning area, where I then set it to kill itself. <laughs> That's what it gets for all its hard work. But it was about this time when I noticed the armor sand moves slow as heck. So I actually set aside and timed how long it would take for the scanning process to understand every single build. And I'm dead serious when I say this, it took 2 hours and 50 minutes to run one scan. I literally ate ramen noodles, chicken noodle soup, and 3 episodes of Mr. Robot, all of which were delicious, before I even finished one scan. Oh my god, this scanning time was AIDS and did not fit my standards. So I have some quick little ideas I can implement to make this faster. First thing I did was make these two buttons called uppies and downies that adjust the height of the fat scanner area from 15 to whatever size you want it to be. And you can see by my dinky marker over there that it actually goes down and up relative to it. So it limits the amount of layers that you need to scan so it doesn't need to scan the entire top filled up with nothing if you don't want it to. And this should incredibly reduce the waiting time if you're doing a smaller build. I also cut out the AIDS process where it needs to do two laps per layer because that's just kind of silly. But because I'm doing this, I'm going to have to make my future work really dang fast somehow. And to make it even more annoying, I'm going to remove it from two repeaters before teleporting to one repeater before teleporting. And this is going to make the next bits of this video just so much harder. <laughs> Last thing I want to add is so the scanner has the ability to skip lines if it realizes that's useless. So going back to my diagram from earlier, basically what I'm doing is once it hits the end, instead of my instinct of it just going over and scanning the next line, and instead uses its dang eyes to think for itself and uses a slash execute if blocks command to compare all the blocks in the next line over to it to this air tube I built over here and if it sees that they are identical then it realizes wait Scanning this next line is a complete waste of my time because there's literally nothing there and it skips that garbage. Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! No, it's kind of embarrassing to say it, but to make all these innovations work flawlessly, it took me five dang hours. But hey, when I gave it some time to run the new scanner on this random six block tall build, the time went from two hours and 50 minutes all the way down to eight minutes and 33 seconds. That is 20 times faster than the original scan, which is absolutely insane. But now I need to begin getting it to print the mega version of what was built here while it's doing the scan. I think the most efficient way to do this is to create a new armor stand to 
friends. And basically, I'm gonna make it move on a 10 times scale to the scanner armor sand. So every one block movement the scanner armor sand makes, the printer armor sand is gonna do that exact same movement, but 10 times bigger. Let's just give that a test. Oh, oh, it's zooming. Look how fast it's going. And does it loop around? Oh, yeah, yes. Okay, that's good. But look at that. I didn't expect that to work first try. The thing is, though, that I hope you realize is that I'm going to have to make it print the build at this speed, which is going to be a bit insane. And does it go up to the next layer? Please, please, please. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it does. Okay. Next, what I can do now is after each of the armor sand movements, there's a little space here where I can actually put redstone. So what we can do is put four wings of command blocks in this spot. And what I can do is basically set these two top wings of command blocks to look for nature blocks. As I said earlier, it's just blocks that could be found in terrain and whatnot. And all the data that that collects will go towards the terraining. But under the top wings are two more wings of command blocks that will be looking for artificial blocks. That could mean to build a building or something. I don't know. Spent a good lovely hour hooking all that up. Then over here, I could begin building a building for data reading, which is a spot so I could turn whatever is scanned and make that run through instructions over here. And then that's going to make it do whatever it needs to do to be printed. Because each block is going to have to have its own unique attributes while it's getting generated. Damn, that sounded nerdy. <laughs> here, let me re-explain it, but this time with fun, happy visuals if this is oh getting too God. complicated for you. Basically, for every single position the scanner could find itself in, it needs to scan, scan, scan the living turn nuggets out of every single thing block that is around it and inside of it. And that gets sent over to this building here, which does even more scanning to understand how the chunk will look after it gets placed and where the armor stand is in the printing zone. I know this silly little Minecraft video just started, but it's about to get way more insane. So the first thing we should probably work on is terraining, and I actually have a pretty smart way on how we can do this. But for my idea, first we need to clear some space underground. Go way over here, dig all the way to bedrock, copy paste, fill air, and oh, oh, did, did my game just crash? Uh. Uh, oh, oh, okay, wow, look at this area. Ooh, look, diamonds. Okay, now time for my little plan. And I'm gonna call this plan the loom and chisel bookshelf strat. Why? Honestly, I don't even know myself. The idea is first I could create a 10 by 10 cube filled up with looms. And what I can do is just fly around and break a bunch of random parts of this cube and get real deep in there. Destroy just a bunch of random parts around. Now what I can do is fill all the air blocks here that I broke with chiseled bookshelves. And now we have a loom cube filled up with random bits and bobs of chiseled bookshelves. I still have no idea why I made it those blocks. And what we could do is slash clone this corner and uh, uh, this corner and put those coordinates inside of uh, this command block. So now it's set up so every terrain block activates this clone over to the printer armor sand and then it replaces the looms with the main block of the texture and then the chisel bookshelves with a complementary texture. Just to give this a simple test so far I'm gonna put one grass block here and if I hit print it should appear right. Yes okay it printed over there. Oh and look how cool this top texture is. Oh I love it. There we go now we have the first printed block. But now he needs to get it to learn and understand like every single possibility the blocks to be found in. So something like this would be recognized as a hill and something like this would be recognized as a cliff or whatever, you get the point. So to begin doing this, I made 32 variants of the Lumen Bookshelf method, all with unique cutouts. Hey, a uh, common question, by the way. Kitty Keen, is this how you decided to spend a perfectly good Thursday working on a video instead of speaking as much as a single sentence to another human for an entire day? And the answer to that is, uh, no, yes. Um, you see, I don't have well built social relationships, I have poorly built Minecraft builds. So this is what all the terrain schematics look like now that they're done, but now it needs to understand which of these to place for every scenario. <laughs> And I think I got a pretty good system for that. Basically, whenever the armor sand gets teleported, it understands a block that it's on, and it'll activate its own unique chamber and the data reading tower thing. Currently, the only two chambers I've set up so far is the grass and the dirt chamber. Uh, shut up, I am lazy. That is all that's needed for now. And here, it activates all these command blocks, which have a hole whole lot of if condition nerdy statements for each terrain schematic. And what they're doing is they're basically asking at the armor sand, hey, is there a block here? Hey, is there a block here too? Maybe a block here as well? And they keep asking the same dumb simple question enough times so till eventually it parts out the best landform for each environment. And then it clones it from way down here all the way up to the printer armor sand and then retextures it so it doesn't look like garbage lumen bookshelf blocks. And now just like that, it all works. As you can see, it completely understood to build a mountain here, this little grass spot here that turned into a chiseled hill looking area. And these dots and squares over here got turned into a mini mountain and placement block thing. Oh, and I'm sorry, did I forget to go in depth on how it actually all works? And it seems like I just cut to it just randomly start working. Well, that's because I did. 
This took me over a week to code. Things may have gone a, a wee bit out of hand, and I ended up having to create a polish arm stand, which is currently up there right now. And basically, what the polish arm stand does is it goes around and places a bunch of light level zero light blocks in order to clean out the terrain, which in the end makes it look less choppy. You see, the light block is actually a pretty unknown block, but the reason I decided to use it is because if it's set to light level zero, then it basically acts like air because you can go through it. And if I come down here, you can see it can still hold data, so I was able to make the polisher schematic so it can be cloned over the area to remove harsh edges. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty dang good, which I'm very happy about because this terrain generation has taken far too long. And now, after adding a bunch of texture variants, it can now basically print whatever terrain you want. I built this random block mountain over there, and just by printing, it has now turned it into an even more random block mountain thing, but bigger. I basically just grabbed a whole bunch of random terrain blocks and just placed them all around, and it actually looks pretty dang cool somehow. Just ignore the terrible video quality, my OPS is currently taking a fat turd right now, so uh, even though this mountain was supposed to look like garbage because I was testing, it actually kind of looks cool. Now the next thing I have to make is to make it so it's able to actually spawn buildings that go on top of the generated train here. Let me just reset the train using this beautiful new button I added, and yeah, look, it reset- oh shoot. Alright, so this is basically how I imagine buildings are kind of going to look. I want to set it up so each kind of category of block can build something different. Like, for example, here I use concrete, and what I want that to mean is to build its type of building. Like, red can mean to build a hospital, and uh, blue can mean to build an office, and light blue can be to build a vet or something. <laughs> And glass and stained glass could mean to build a skyscraper with a type of color. So you could build massive skyscrapers really easily. And over here, with all these types of terracotta, it could mean to build a house. And of course, I could also make it construct random builds, like uh, pyramids, uh, roads, and uh, Donald Trump's wall. Alright, so I didn't really explain this earlier, but what I set up is once the printer armor sand gets onto the third layer, it summons the polisher armor sand so that can begin running its course. And it knows to do this because right here specifically, I actually put an emerald block, negative four blocks, below it, which tells us it started the third layer, which makes it start the polisher. And this is important because now I set it up so once it reaches the next layer, and it will summon a new printer and skin arms in, but this one is going to only be looking for building blocks, and I can use that to print buildings on top of the terrain. But what I can do is by doing something kind of similar to what I did for the terrain, I can build basic ugly prefabs for each possible structure. Like here can be an example, I built a grocery store type place, but it's currently designed with no walls or uh, entrance. That's because I actually want those things to be separate from the original builds. Alright, so I got done with all the buildings that will be created when there's a concrete, and this is exactly what I imagined. You can see, I made sure every concrete mints an entirely new building. Like this one over here, this is an arcade, and this one over here is a Starbucks, and a, a daycare over here, and a nightclub, and I probably shouldn't say what this one is. <laughs> But the thing is, I made nearly all these completely wallless. And I did this because if the buildings are cloned next to one another, it'll look like they continue until eventually it's meant to stop. And for when that occasion is, I should probably make some walls so it doesn't just not have walls. Ooh, would you look at that hard cut in the footage? I have now successfully built all of them and it took so dang long. As you can see, I had to create variants of all the walls facing both that way and uh, that way, but I also have to create a few special duplicated versions of the walls because as you can see, I marked a few of the buildings here with this trashy yellow pole sticking out that have to use special wall placement for things like doors and whatnot. And this marker is for me later so I know which buildings need help. Now the interesting thing is the fact that currently, if there's a bunch of terrain like this area here, it is actually still viewed in 10x10x10 10 10 10 chunks. Meaning if we were in a scenario where you wanted to place a building on top of a piece of terrain like this, it would be weird because if we go over to the final print area, we see because of the way the terrain got interpreted, there is now a hill here. And because it's currently viewing the area in 10x10x10 10 10 10 chunks, it would currently place the building up here floating above the hill. And we wouldn't want buildings looking like this because it's gross. It would be bad, and it would look stupid. <laughs> Get ready for another big fat nerd time lapse. So now by doing the same methods as before, now when it detects a building block, it now shoots it all the way to one of these underneath branches of command blocks, which as I said a while ago, these underneath branches are specifically looking for build blocks. But more accurately, we're more specifically looking at this one chunk over here, because these are the ones I set up to look for concrete blocks. All this other area will produce other things that I have not set up yet, so ignore that. But within this concrete chunk, there's one command block I'm actually looking for, and it is this one way over 
over here in the far underneath corner that basically says dur, 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 blue concrete dur, 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 or something like that and it shoots a random redstone command block and inside this area i set up each one of these chambers here are in charge of their own concrete to building conversion but the one that's converting right now is this chamber over here in charge of blue concrete so it powers this redstone and the first thing that that does is it comes all the way to the printer build armor stand and it begins to find the best spot to place the building so it poops out this new unique armor stand in the center of the trunk this armor stand comes with a unique tag attached to it so it could be identified and it's invulnerable and i also made it jacked up on that good negative 9y value motion energy so it can be shot down and collide with the first height of the land that it's over top so then this data can return back to its chamber which then clones the main body of the building that's looking for over to the ground armor stand that just got slammed down but then it begins sinking back to the scan arrow stand is there any more blue concrete squares around it so it would know where it shouldn't be placing walls because the building could be a whole lot bigger but this spot here doesn't have any more blue concrete around it so it spawns all the walls and closing the entire building inside and it kills the ground armor stand because screw that and now just like that we are able to build buildings to see if all the concrete buildings spawn correctly i place a few dinky concrete blocks inside the scanner area and just by doing that it has now kind of created its own little market area and honestly in my opinion some of the way the buildings came out actually look really cool this here is supposed to be a candy shop by the way like come on look how cool this aquarium came out Ooh, or the school here or even this nightclub area with the disco ball <laughs> wow even this hospital came out good even though it kind of looks like one of those third world country hospitals and it also has an upstairs where all the drugs are stored too. Wow. Uh, I know I'm showing off a lot of spots, but come on, look at this arcade area. It looks so cool. All right, so I didn't think that this would happen, but I believe we reached a point in the video where the work to be done is great, but let's be honest, it's too nerdy for it to be good for content. And I still have to code and create every single one of these command blocks to build something unique. So let this time lapse be dedicated to the pure amount of work I'm going to be spending on this for probably the next two weeks of my life. That is going to allow this printer to become amazing. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. I'm back. That time lapse was AIDS. But hey, I have added so, so many new features. So much so, I actually want to demonstrate to you the power this printer now holds. Uh, uh, pick up. He's not picking up. Bro, pick up the fu- Oi. Kitty bean. Uh, so basically, I want to test out my printer's printing abilities, and you're going to help with that. Oh, uh, word, word. What am yeah. I doing? Basically, you're going to open up a new single-player world. I don't even know. I need to find the Minecraft launcher. I haven't played in a while. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Minecraft. <laughs> you're supposed to be a, like a human benchmark. Oh, oh, uh, my bad. Minecraft. My bad. Basically, we're going to have a building battle, and you're going to start up a new single-player world, and we'll have 20 minutes to build a, a nether castle, right? Yeah, yeah, word. A nether castle? Yeah. What the fuck is another castle? <laughs> Use your imagination. I don't know. And yeah, basically 20 minutes once that's done. I'm going to be printing on my own world the same thing. And we're going to compare basically if you're worse in command blocks. I'm going to call this world... <laughs> Bro. Kitty Keen's Balls. Ah! I'll give you 20. I'll start the timer. You could start your own timer, but I'm gonna start a timer for 20 minutes. Uh, okay. I'm I'm gone. Uh, good luck. Bye bye. Oh, you're leaving me. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, I'm leaving. Greatest 
nether fortress or castle ever did. I did not want to hear him speak. Okay, let's let's start. Humans versus command blocks. L L L L L L L L L L L L L. The fuck does he want me to do? Okay, I gotta be quick. Okay, so it's probably a big fat. There's netherrack, right? Yeah. Okay, netherrack. Fuck is the sensitivity so bad? What is it on? Sixty three. Isn't that normal? Oh, I crashed. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't got a big ass awesome PC like Kitty. Ooh. Okay. Oh, shoot, he's texting me. What, what is he saying? Game crap. <laughs> Screw you. Okay, let's just continue the build. This didn't happen. You know what? Honestly, nether castles probably have lava, so. All right. This here is going to be a lava pit. Yep, yep. I definitely click as fast. This is not an auto clicker. Uh-huh. Human ability right here. Uh, this is about good. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, this is the perfect fucking place to start for a nether fortress in the snow tundra. There is no way out of it. That's awesome. It's all fucking snow. It's literally all snow, bro. That's. It's gonna like cut to his perspective where he's just like shit's generating, and then I'm just flying trying to find somewhere to look. They need a bridge to go over the lava now. Yes, all the way. This is lava place too big. No. Yes, yes. Very nice. Bridge needs to have walls. Cool. Epic. Uh, now we have to have a uh, warp console. Um, right. Wait, that's nylium. Uh, that's uh, ah, yeah. This nylium is going to take up this entire area because the castle is going to be on top of it. Good. It's going in the snow. It's it's going in the snow. We have nowhere else to build it. He picked the one thing I'm terrible at building it. I don't know if he knows that. You know what? It's fine. We're just going to do vanilla Minecraft. Okay, now what do castles deep slate? Deep slate equal castle. Uh, bricks. Yeah, we need some bricks. Castles look like uh, this. Castles look like this. Is this even centered? No, that's not centered. Okay, there we go. It's starting to look like a castle. Just gotta make towers here that go upwards. What the f is that? You're kidding. Dude! No, nope, we're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. This is not going well. This is not, this is not it. Now I say what we need to do. Well, let's get some more of these red blocks in here. Whatever the hell this is. Right? Yeah. You feeling that? It's like big ass wall. Keep the fucking aliens out. Look at that. I can't really explain the vision for it. You just kind of have to trust the process here. My idea that I'm going for, it's gonna be like dojo. It's gonna be like a facade. He's, he's gonna have to look at it from one side. Otherwise, Kind of falls apart pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make this castle have a fat butt cheek because it needs to look actually kind of buff. That might actually look kind of cool. Yes, yes, that's a castle. I think we're done. Okay, hopefully this goes well. I'm gonna start printing. There it goes. It's starting to print. It's making its way and it's printing netherrack. You're from this angle? No, it doesn't look too bad. You just can't look at it from any other angle ever, and then you're chilling. <laughs> This is so bad. Holy shit. I'm actually about to lose to a robot. Oh my god, this is so fucking ass. Uh, da 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 da. Okay, I'm losing my mind. I'm. No, no, screw this. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching YouTube. Oh, this is like really a high stress build battle. I'm participating so much. Like, I'm sweating right now. You know, honestly, with all this hard work I'm doing, I wonder how Tyler is actually building all of this by himself. I think the way we win this is really by just out, out doing ourselves on the details because his robot just like repeats over and over again the same pattern. So I think where I could win this is just by really making use of those human details that his robot can't do. Oh, shit. Oh, would you look at that? The timer's done. Uh, okay. Oh, fuck, fuck. Kitty can add in a timer sound effect. All right. Damn. That's the last block. Timer up. This now, now. Yo. The, ti the timer is up. Yeah, no, I, it was very loud. All right, screen share. So, um. Uh huh. Here we go. Uh, Actually, you know what? Can I make it nighttime? Why'd you build it in the ice? Shut up. 
<laughs> it's contrast, dude. Look at this. So, um, uh, there is there is a back to it, but like, um, you don't need to see that. <laughs> Bro, it goes into water. Yeah, it's like corrupting the land around it, which is fucking <laughs> sick. Look at that. <laughs> We went for a dojo style build here and like yeah. the back's actually sick. Like it's really cool. <laughs> it's just but, an like, iceberg. But I'm I'm <laughs> shut up. <laughs> uh, but it is it is really sick. You just have to trust Go inside the build. Like I don't think we have to do that. <laughs> Did you not build an interior? I I'm not saying I didn't build an interior. Why are you in F1 mode? Oh, my bad. <laughs> Didn't you take people. a screenshot? Yeah. So this is the inside, and yeah, that's that's pretty much that's the inside. Ah, uh, yo, I see the detail. Yeah. Right. A lot of effort. <laughs> 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 to the inside uh, of the build. Wait, did you build that ice cap? <laughs> yeah, Why? That was not on purpose. Such a <laughs> stuff. It's such a good designer choice. All right, Damn, time, right. time for my build. Oh shoot, I have to like look away. Tell me when you're looking. Oh, I'm looking. I okay. Um, so this is the mini version. Uh, this is the part I actually Whoa, built. Shut up. Ass. Okay. I thought it was a cool design. Anyways, you could kind of see it overlapping over here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's insane. Uh, you got like a cool lava bridge going on over here. This is what you got going through here. You can kind of go through the hallways. This is the inside. We got some flower pots, some some cool like ender dragon room over here. Gold. This spot's supposed to be like a meth lab. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what I was building originally. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's my build. Um, as you can see. It goes here. It has an upstairs too. Like this upstairs patio also. Like, like look at that. It has like walls up here so you can like actually like look out and shoot arrows. Yeah. Stuff like that. So like it like opens up so you could do that. It has like these side menacing things as well that you could get into through these back doors. Anyways, that's uh, that's my build. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a close one. Like, it was, you know, <laughs> just Anyways, side. This is insane. <laughs> this is insane. What the hell? The turrets, the bridge. We're Victor here. Uh, <laughs> Also, before I go, if you want to download and play this world, I actually posted the world download link in the announcer channel in my Discord. Links in description. And to make it easy for y'all, because I know sometimes y'all are brain dead, I included a user manual over here that has a bunch of instructions so you could build whatever you want. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would very much appreciate it if you were to subscribe. Please, 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 please.